Hello friends, welcome to EPG Partshala. I am Dr. Jayadeep Shorungi, Faculty Department of English, Jogesh Chandra Choudhury College, University of Calcutta, Kolkata. Friends, we are into module 26. This module is on Francis Bacon. The module is written by Dr. Modumita Majumdar, who teaches English at Bhangar Mahavid Dalai, Kolkata. Friends, in this module, we are going to learn the contribution of Francis Bacon as a prose writer. We are going to place him in the context of Elizabethan writings and we are going to evaluate his prose pieces in the context of the Renaissance. We will take up a few instances and we are also going to focus on his prose style in the context of aphorism. So, on the whole, our intention in the module is to read Francis Bacon and his contribution and his gems of proses or uh, essays written by Francis Bacon in the light of the Elizabethan tradition. Friends, let us start with a little bit of bio details of Francis Bacon. Francis Bacon was the son of Sir Nicholas Bacon, the Lord Keeper of the Seal. From a tender age, Bacon found himself exposed to an atmosphere of humanist scholarship. A young Francis Bacon began attending Trinity College, Cambridge from April 1573 AD. He found the curriculum at Gray's Inn old fashioned. Bacon was strong in his criticism. He said that his teachers were surely men of wits, but never explored beyond a few authors and was chiefly stagnating themselves with an author like Aristotle. What did then Bacon do? The answer the new renaissance, humanism, the post Aristotelian people, they should be included in the curriculum. So, possibly you have a pulse that from the college days, Bacon was a rebel and he rebelled against the orthodoxical pattern of education. Now, friends, when did Bacon start writing his essays? Not many can claim to have used life after such a beating in terms of reputation fruitfully. He was accused of taking bribe soon after he became Viscount. But Bacon was a breed of different level. It is only after his forced retirement that Bacon went on to write essays in which he shared the wisdom of his life. The wisdom coming who had seen much struggle, rise, fame and the loss. The original number of essays in Bacon's essays published in 1597 was 10, which included titles like of studies, of discourse, of, of sweaters, of expense by the year 1612 there were 38 essays. They were pearls of wisdom, though it is known that Bacon's development as a man had left him sadder. Much a man expected should have been didactic, even dogmatic in tone, is not it? Bacon being Bacon, he was none being pragmatic and very friendly in approaches and his essays are observations. Friends, let us now talk about Francis Bacon in the context of one of his gems of his essays entitled of studies. Let me quote, 
studies serve for delight for ornament and for ability their chief use for delight is in privateness and retiring for ornament it is in discourse and for ability it is in the judgment and disposition of business for expert men can execute and perhaps judge of particulars one by one by the general counsels and the plots and marshalling of affairs come best from those that are learned to spend too much time in studies is sloth to use them too much for ornament is affectation to make judgment wholly by their rules is the humor of a scholar so in this extract you can easily find out the aphoristic remarks the epigrammatic commands the statements which are observations of life and life's daily acts he makes sure that learning makes a complete man a man who is capable of doing things so he makes serious uh, demarcations between man of action or man of judgment and man who only thinks so according to bacon execution is the best part of learning of studies as an essay reminds us certain things on studies by samuel johnson the education of women by daniel defoe later on bifcon had concluded his essay by saying so many defect of the mind may have a special receipt study not only wets the wheat but necessarily for growth different in texture but johnson's and defoe's essay only arguments the argument started by bacon long ago that means bacon's of studies is primarily a, as an inspiring essay which inspires later on daniel defoe and samuel johnson to come out with critical commentary on it of studies is a discourse which actually hits you and the gray matter of the brain where he differences he, he makes differences that you should not read all the books at a time some books are to be tested some to be swallowed and some to be digested so he has a recipe for what to be read and how to be read and which discipline has to be read so an uh, entire essay talks about the process of learning the sources of learning and execution of learning as a renisha man now friends let us switch over to another essay of discourse what is of discourse about this essay tells us how one can lead the way in a conversation without being dominating he makes it sure that one should not dominate in any discursive parameters when one is conversing with another the apt spirit of the essay has been caught by lisa gardine in her book the art of discourse published in the year 1974 bacon's essays fall squarely under the heading of presentation or method of discourse unquote these these are understood in which it may be believed and assimilated basically these essays communicate percepts for the guidance of personal conduct in public affairs based on bacon's own political experience unquote so here is a judgment that bacon's essays will enlighten you politically sociologically to dogmatize within yourself bacon observes that it must be understood that there are some who have common places and themes on which they are comfortable talking about there are certain topics bacon argues should be kept out of jest namely religion matters of state great persons and man's present business 
of importance. Anything that deserves pity, so Bacon is very categorical. He says, as a satirist who makes others' affairs of his wit must be afraid of others' memory or else he can land himself in discomfort. One must know the distinction between bitterness and wit of saltiness as Bacon puts it. So, you can easily understand the salty nature of his essays and the amazing way he presents it. Friends, of discourse reminds us certain things. What are they? The present essay of discourse reminds us another of Samuel Johnson's essay called Conversation. So, you can easily understand how Bacon's essay initiated Johnson to, to come out with critical commentary on it. Another essay by Jonathan Swift called Hints Towards an Essay on Conversation and it reminds us strongly of Bacon's of discourses of discourse. So, you can easily understand how of discourse also initiated dialogues in the later half of the century or in the centuries to come. Now, friends, let us talk about another essay written by Francis Bacon of truth. This essay begins by making a genial observation. It mocks those who refuse to admit that there is objective truth that needs to be acknowledged by all. Bacon almost laughs as he says that people oft have a natural love of lying. Even when lying yields no notable advantage, truth resembles light, but Bacon opines that many people prefer to flirt with darkness because they take some pleasure in lies and take to lying almost without need. Bacon, who might have had faced a debacle with allegations labeled against him at the ripe age of 60, however, asserts that the truth is greatest good that a man can possess. Where does truth come from and why it is so important? Bacon has the answer. He asserts that truth comes from God and consequently it brings us close to God and naturally truth provides us with greatest pleasure. Friends, let us then contextualize Bacon with another essay entitled of discourse. And we will in this particular uh, in so for some time we will talk about the structure of of discourse. And remember Bacon is famous for style, presentation and structural development in prose. The essay is framed by references spatially relevant to Christians. Bacon leads to the conclusion that truth is good or God. Does it not remind us the Indian thought Shattam Shivam Shundaram, truth is good or truth is God. Bacon does cite various classical authorities and discusses various classical opinions to argument his belief. Not all classical philosophers believed in the coexistence of truth, but there would be some who like the Christians agreed that truth should be highly valued. Bacon is wit personified. He says lying is found oft attractive and truth pain boring. So, people would tell lie even when there is no benefit from it. Bacon takes the essay back to the debate intimated or initiated by Plato. Poets told lies. Bacon, like most of his contemporaries, suggested that the lies told the poets were not harmful in nature, almost Aristotelian in argument. He says, poetic truth, untruth is shadow lie poetic untruth is shadow lie. Finally, he needs or he ends the essay by aligning himself to the Christian doctrine of truth. So, in this particular part you can understand 
how truth has become the part and parcel or a structural pattern of the essay called of discourse. Friends, we are becoming more philosophical in identity. Of truth is the in indicative of the greatness of Bacon's mind and his art, that he is a philosopher and gifted with practical wisdom and reasoning. Bacon talks of subjective truth that is functional in social life. After reading the essay, we are likely to conclude that Bacon is almost a moralist. What are the other aspects of Bacon that we will notice revealed through the essay? He is keen observer of human mind and behavior and says like the time of Pilate, there should be people who do not care about truth. Bacon reasons as to why people to te do tell lies. First, truth is acquired through hard work and man is not euphemistic and all enthusiastic about hard work. Secondly, truth curtails man's freedom. Thirdly, Bacon says, as I quote, in natural through corrupt love and lie itself. Further, he says, a mixture of lie doth ever add pleasure. In the bright light of truth, man fears exposure. Bacon states that it deprived of false pride and vanities. The human mind would be deflated and would look poor and sad. He uses the idea of truth to create an utopia, suggesting that truth can make the earth a paradise. Certainly, it is heaven upon earth to have man's mind move in charity, charity, rest in providence and turn upon the poles of truth. Look at the implication of the phrase poles of truth. So, he unquote, he says that poles of truth that guides man to paradise. Now, friends, the most important thing in Bacon that is aphorism. And according to Bacon, weak makes a man complete. Bacon is noted for his wit and aphorism. By aphorism, we mean pithy, short, direct statements, which are witty as well as resourceful. Again, there is a lot to be understood about his style in present to the Elizabethan and the Jacobian prose writers. Do not forget, Bacon was a magician of words and phrases. One thing we can deduce from a study of the three essays that we have done so far, that Bacon's essays are like proverbs. His words and phraseology are catchy and they have this inner meaning and their structures are pithy as well as very much straightforward. For example, suspicions among thoughts are like bats among birds, quoting from of suspicion. The ways to enrich are many and most of them foul from of richness. It is strange desire to seek power and lose liberty or to seek power over others and lose power over a man's life, quoting from of great place. Such lines also ooze of practical sense on the part of the essayist. Thoughts are so condensed that reading of Bacon's essays should be at such place where we can sip in the treasure. Now, friends, in the context of two styles, early and later essays, we have Bacon in front of us. Critics have largely agreed that Bacon has two styles. One style we see in the early essays, Macaulay, by contrasting extracts from of studies and of adversity, makes obvious two styles of Bacon. The first collection of essays of Bacon is largely illustrative. The original idea had been to make the essays into short of diary and observations on our various topics. These early essays were worked around the central idea. In his later essays, Bacon comes to maturity and his essays achieve more color and texture. 
also in the later essays the extreme condensation of the early essays was gone though a sense of incompletedness or incompleteness accompanies his essays throughout nevertheless loose thoughts are left out in the later essays so there is a growth in bacon altogether now friends no one should forget the use of rhetorics and we should discuss bacon at length in the context of his use of or the mastery of rhetorics bacon is a fabulous rhetorician who uses it to persuade and dazzle in his in this and he has a few competitors in the history of english language bacon style is a plethora of figures of speech a master of simile and metaphor analogies and allusions abound in his works in of the true greatness of kingdom there is an analogy drawn from the bible which is rather elaborate the blessing of judah and isher all never meet the same people and nation should be both the lion swip and the ass between brethren neither will it be that a people overlaid with texas should ever become valiant and mathematical friends we always associate bacon with wisdom apart from remarkable wit remarkable expressions pithy catchy sentences bacon is known for wisdom he is flexible in his approach he is not wholly difficult extreme condensation of idea sometimes demand slow reading of his essays though a few latinism in his essays are difficult to follow at best we can conclude that style of bacon was witty aphoristic terse and full of brevity the sentences in the essays reveal wisdom practical knowledge all times they are epigrammatic and all times they are straightforward we may conclude by a few extracts which dazzle in the history of literature number 1 some books are to be tested other to be swallowed and some few to be chewed and digested of studies reading maketh a full man conference a ready man and writing an exact man from of studies again of great place we have the rising into place is laborious and by pains men come to greater pains so bacon has no parallel in the con- if you th- think of style presentation and linguistic devices so he is no match for any other writers during his time after wisdom here comes imagery bacon is also famous for the use of imagery he is a master artist who paints words and who uses imagery to the perfection imagery and figurative speeches become more rampant in the later essays by bacon bacon's learned mind fluently used quotations and allusions drawn from various sources like the bibles fables history ancient greek and roman writers and much more than that in the essay of truth we have be, we have seen references to pilot lucian lucretius and monte or in the great place in the essay entitled of great place we encounter allusions to tacitus galba and vespasian friends bacon at no point was cumbersome he is straightforward a thing that would be confirmed by dryden bacon the essayist can be summed and paid tribute in his own words if a man will begin with certainties he will end in doubts 
but if a, if he will be content to begin with doubts he shall end in certainties it is from the advancement of learning book 1 so you can easily understand the point of view of francis bacon